in one squeeze we have the millennial farmer zach johnson in the second squeeze we have randy nesman the master pipe layer only one will take home the trophy we're making hay Hello everybody, welcome to Bales A Farm and Ranch. I am Trevor Bales. Before we get into it, please hit that like button. Just, just tap it, just tap it. It helps us a lot, it helps with the uh, YouTube algorithms. It's important, it might not seem important, but it is. Time for the topic. This hay squeeze is getting worn out. Look at how thin the tube is getting on the backside. Look at that gap. Stick my pinky in there, same on this side. That gap is getting big up there. On this system, this metal rod is rubbing that metal tube, same on here. The metal rod, the metal rod is rubbing the metal tube. These are hollow which isn't a bad thing, but they crack. This rod is, is up here above where the point of squeezing is. It squeezes, the, the this part is on the hay, but this pulls from above it. So I just got, we just unloaded a brand new clerf clamp. I'll show you the differences, why we're going from this style to this style. Let's go look. Whoa, look at that crazy thing. Ta-da, there it is. So first off, the clamp, the, the clamp itself or the forks are solid metal. That is one solid piece. They make a straight line. The other one, or they're hollow, so they curve a little bit. And a new squeeze driver, even experienced one such as myself, sometimes push, hey, we push, you'll push a bale through because it's curved a bit. Now the second part, I was pointing out where it pulls from, where it squeezes at. That tube is all the way at the bottom where the clamp is, so you're getting a better squeeze. Probably the most significant part about this whole thing, inside this pipe, this tube, is this synthetic something or another. Now, the, that keeps the metal from rubbing on the metal. I've got an old clamp we've had since 1998. I've never had to replace those. We've had to rebuild these clamps several several times on those other squeezes and it cost it used to cost seven thousand dollars now i've been quoted around ten thousand dollars this clamp here cost fourteen thousand i'd rather spend the extra four thousand dollars have a better clamp and not have to rebuild it that's a company clerf they make all sorts of clamps um i visited their i visited their booth at the farm show uh so you got you saw those there we talked to talk to those guys a little bit lane i think his name is lane lane anyway so but for that to happen because this tube is lower then the other one here's a wear plate where it slides for side shifting this is lower so what we have to do i'm going to take this this metal to a shop and he's going to weld that onto the squeeze at a lower point so that slides back and forth on it so I'm going to pull off this old clamp and then I'm gonna take my paint marker and number the hydraulic line so I don't get them confused. Pull this clamp off, which is just some um, hoses and pins. Leave it here, take the squeeze to the shop with those metal plates and I'm gonna give him a hand. He's in the shop alone today and we're gonna weld them on. So that's what I'm working on. Hopefully we'll have this new clamp up and running today. If not, I'm special and I can't do anything, so let's get to work. First things first, we're gonna number it, which isn't hard, I just don't wanna confuse things. Uh, I can start one. This one. This one. This one. So here's 
do Everything's numbered. I think I'm gonna set it right over there, out of the way. Go some uh, two by fours to set it on. Th oh, there's some in my pickup. There is literally one in my pickup. Found another one. I just saw two more over there. Several more. One, two. Now we have four. Might as well bring my pickup over here. I'm gonna need a wrench out of it. Or two, maybe three quarters or something. Seven, eight, I don't remember what size this thing is, but we'll figure it out in a minute. So oh, there's the boss. Gotta have a pretty serious conversation with the boss. Had to let a guy go the other day. I need to replace him. I have someone in mind. It's one of those fun conversations. Throw our two by fours under there. There it is. So those six hoses and these two pins Right here, well actually, I pull those off, those nut, those bolts. Pull the pins or bolts, whatever. Um, and then that's, it's all off. So I have something very embarrassing to tell you guys. So everything I did earlier, I had to put all back on. There's two things you can take off. One, you can take off everything. The carriage, the clamp is on. That's what I started doing. Then I realized, wait a minute. We need to weld on to the carriage. So put everything back on. Now I'm going to pull the clamp off the carriage, which requires some air tools and some larger uh, wrenches, which I don't have my pickup. So now I'm in the shop. One for air, two for the larger wrenches. Oh, that's frustrating. These are uh, inch and a half nuts. I don't carry inch and a half in my pickup. Uh oh, get in there. There we go. Oh wait, I already broke that one. It's this one I need to break. Let's see if I can go between here. Oh, yay. When I lower this all the way down, it lines up with this uh, bracket. So I've got to get this to here. Same with the other side. That bracket's in the way. I think I already broke that one loose. I don't remember. Check this out. Two adapters. It's awesome.
That's pretty far out. That's one I can get to. That's one I can't get to. I lowered a little bit. Well, that's embarrassing. I forgot to take this plastic whatever plate off and I'm already at the shop. Luckily, he's unloading uh, acetylene oxygen, all that good stuff. I told him he's gonna eat his lunch, so I had Manuel. Manuel's on his way here with my pickup. We're gonna pull that off, it's just some Allen wrenches. <laughs> I feel so stupid. I also realized when I was driving here, <clears throat> I forgot to put the cotter pins back in these Oh, that's embarrassing too. So they could have vibrated out and fallen off. Luckily they didn't. Without the clamp on this squeeze, it is the roughest riding. That weight on there helps a lot. You wouldn't think so. Darn it. Gosh, tires are so expensive, you guys. Anyways, waiting on Manuel. We'll, we'll pull this off while he eats his lunch. And then, uh, I'm gonna give him a hand. He's alone today at a shop. These plates, one of these plates is kind of heavy, so. Man. I left this camera in the squeeze while Danny was working on it. Ugh, that was a huge pain pulling that rubber mat off. Anyways, I've been running around all afternoon. This is the fitting off the old squeeze cylinders. The new one is a lot bigger. Nobody anywhere has these. Well, nobody in Buckeye, so I gotta run to Phoenix tomorrow morning. Ugh. And, so tomorrow's kinda cool. Senor Millennial Farmer and Senor Randy, the master pie player, are gonna be in town. I was gonna have them do a squeeze race. Well, I, like an idiot, just assumed, oh, they'll have these in stock everywhere. This thing will be up and running today. It's not. So I'm gonna try to get there first thing in the morning. They open at seven. Buy those, uh, buy these. And be back here with this thing together so we can have a squeeze race. That's tomorrow. I don't know what to do with this. Need to figure something out. Anyways, oh, here's what that, here's why I dropped it off, what we did. He welded this big plate on, but then had to add on this as well to pop it out enough. So this is a wear plate. There's a, I'll show you on that clerf clamp. There's a, a, li a plastic deal that, that slides back and forth on this. So this is what this was doing at the shop. Then we caught this big, there's a crack in this squeeze. He ground all that out and welded it back in. So it's good to go. One thing I don't know, might have to cut this off because the other squeeze doesn't have that. I, I don't know, we'll see. We'll know more tomorrow. Here's that wear plate I was just talking about. That that will rub up on that metal. Little blue, well, big blue to me in the shop. He's gonna change the oil tomorrow. Pretty excited. Get to take truck 10, which is a Peterbilt with a Series 60 in it. I'm gonna drive that to uh, PDI's shop in uh, Utah next week or the week after and he's going to manifold turbo and program it we get to film the whole thing i'm pretty excited for that so ron will do this use our sweet fluid all setup thanks fluid all i love this stuff it makes these guys lives so much easier when their life is made easier my life is made easier oh look at they've uh, got the forklift dock finished or close to had to put these safety rails on Put that pipe there to there, which should probably go from here back to the trailer now, but oh well. Looking pretty good. We might just move it tomorrow, get it out of here. A little bit of work that needs to be done to it can be done later somewhere else. Right now, it's just sitting in the way. Moving this is going to be a challenge. I think I'll I think I got it figured out, but it's still going to be a challenge. It's going to take two. I'm going to put a loader at this end and a squeeze at the other end. We'll use chains. 
just so as we turn it can it can spin a little bit and not bind up but uh <laughs> it's gonna be a challenge now when you take the clamp off that squeeze i thought it was rough before it is a lot rougher wow without that clamp i never want to drive that thing again without a clamp it's miserable i hated it all of it day two three eights or new clamp 16. went into phoenix this morning got all our fittings these are all on number 10 uh o-ring boss to a number eight gic that was throwing everybody off but we got it time to install the squeeze here we go oh and he's welding on handles for when we pick people up He just ground off a little spot for the ground. We'll get that mounted. Hopefully it works fine because we're supposed to have a squeeze race today with Millennial Farmer and Randy the Master Pipe Layer. Slavin came out with a drone. Slavin's gonna drone this squeeze race so we can see bird's eye view of how much these guys suck at running a squeeze. Perfect. Perfect? Be good. Perfect. Slavin, what do you do? Tell us about yourself. I do a little bit of everything. You're usually not on this side of the camera, are you? No, I'm not. I usually am uh, the one operating it, but I do drones, I do photo, I do video, I do trolling, you know, a little bit of everything. <laughs> trolling. So I've known Slavin for how many years has it been? 14, 13, 14, 15, yeah, 15. 15. 2015, he was in college and he did a commercial for us. And ever since then, I'll be, we've been friends, but I've been a terrible friend. We have never hung out outside of the farm. I always say, let's go grab a drink, you know, like a soda. And we never, never. we have it. He's brought me, you brought me, he brought me Trulies once. That's disgusting. Hey, you like it. <laughs> Wait, no millennial farmer, he keeps pushing us back. Be there at 10, now be there at 10.30. Gosh, everybody's gonna quit. He's coming at 10.30? That's what he said. Over the house. Down. Okay. Mr. Millennial Farmer, what do you think? Have you ever seen one of those? I have seen one of those, but, but this is cool. I think he... I've actually fueled a bunch of those when I worked at the airport in high school. Oh, that's right. I forgot about uh, your high school days. The good old days. Everybody hold your breath. <laughs> hold your... Oh. He didn't want to spray too close. Nice guy. I just explained to Zach they're grabbing one layer at a time. So they're only doing one, two, three, four, five, six. Six layers. Two trailers, so three per trailer. Are you ready? Is the brake in? The brake might be in. Over on the right, like a semi. The yellow, no, look on the dash. Are you ready? Go! Hey, a tip I gave Randy, just the tip, start at the front of the trailer and work back. Dude, Randy's ahead of you. He's cheating, he has Port in there with him and Port knows how to run a squeeze. The slowest race in the world. In one squeeze, we have the Millennial Farmer, Zach Johnson. In the second squeeze, we have Randy Nesman, the master pipe layer. Only one will take home the trophy. 
He's beating you. Hurry up. He's beating you. PDI rep Lance Brown is here with Lee to witness the epic race of our generation. <laughs> Lee, have you ever seen anything like this? I have never seen anything like this. It's, it's amazing. It's pretty boring, I think. <laughs> These guys are slow. Slowest race ever. Slowest race. It's like watching two turtles. Randy's on his third layer. I know, I feel like he's cheating with you in there. I'm gonna throw a, a, a wrench in Zach's system. I'm gonna climb on top of one of the layers. I might die. All right. I am on the bale of hay. Two bales. If he drops this, our friendship is over. There's a drone. Oh. This can be a tight race. Randy's just ahead of him, but not by much. And Randy's Randy's this much cheating. It looks like Randy, the master pipe layer, Nesman is gonna win. It was a close one. Nail biter. We are the <laughs> it's a nail biter. I don't know. Why, like just by seconds. Just by smear seconds. Amazing. Probably the most boring race I've ever seen. That that got tight at the end. I thought he was just gonna I, crush you. I missed a gear, like trying to back out of the last one. Oh, you just touch it. There's not gears to go well, through. Well, I think I stepped on it both. Oh. So then it then it said the right thing, but I thought I missed it, so then I put it back in reverse, which is actually forward, mm -hmm. and then it started flashing at me. Uh oh, if you do it too many, yeah, yeah, too too quickly. What did you think? Dang it. Giant forklift? Ah, uh, yeah, steering is like way touchier. I used the knob the whole time. Yeah. But yeah, basically a giant forklift and everything's yeah. backwards. Randy, what did you think? First time running a hay squeeze. Tell me, honest opinion, truth. Uh, smooth? Like like a, like a lake? Smooth like, like butter. Like yes. Smooth like butter. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't even cost you any tires, no rims. No rims. Like, what do you, like th you think though? Just like a giant forklift? Yeah. Yeah, pretty, yeah, like a giant forklift. It's essentially a giant yeah. forklift. I don't want right. to sound like it's not. It, it really is. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Bales Hay Sales and uh, and the, the Squeeze and uh, Peterbilt. Peterbilt here. Buckeye, Arizona. Peterbilt here. The actual <laughs> city sponsored me. Farm Ag made Farm it. Ag. Farm Ag made it out. Wow. Uh, what an event. This wouldn't be possible without them. Testicle you know Festival made it to yeah, the show. Correct. Yep. Wow. Yeah, really Beautiful stoked. weather. Yeah, Beautiful really weather. Good. Real well. Millennial Farmer came. He lost. He came, he lost. Came again. I mean, I really didn't think it was anything great. I won't be back. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, all joking aside, while we're here, I gotta at least show you PDI sent a truck down. This right here is Stampede. Aluminum trailer. This guy's got nice stuff. These guys are taking all big bales back to Utah. 
Look, while we're here, you guys want to see inside of Stampede? Look at this leather. Cowhide on the floor. More leather. Look at these seats. Look at this dashboard. I could drive for this guy. Broken fence. So coming up, I think I've already talked about it. I'm actually gonna take one of our trucks up to PDI and I'm gonna film them putting on, they're putting on uh, manifolds, turbo, and a computer chip, not a chip, but a programmer. So I'm gonna drive a truck up there all by myself, which if you know me, I'm not much of a truck driver. Should be interesting, should be a good time and you guys get to see his amazing shop and some of his cool trucks. One day I might own this truck. You show up with Millennial Farmer and all size doors open. Look at this place. This is in Buckeye. So these guys actually have the biggest in the United States uh, air tankers for like fires and stuff. Look at those planes. Look at those tankers. So this is one of the planes that holds the water or whatever they dump on fires. How cool. I'm sorry, this is just turning the craziest video ever. We started off with crop dusters and now we're here. There's nothing back here. I guess all the liquid's right there. Check this out. He thinks it's a 41 or 43. He doesn't remember. He's are in it. <laughs> he says to just jump in it. Oh my gosh, I could run a hay squeeze. I couldn't run an airplane though. Oh, this guy flew this plane from Arkansas to Buckeye. What was that like? Cold and windy. Oh, I was gonna say, were you sweaty? But I guess if you're high enough. So here's the firefighting airplane fleet in Isla. That's Trevor Bales, but there's also airplanes behind it, more airplanes. That's, a, that's an old backhoe. 